Good evening, gentlemen. I Good evening, hope... Pastor. You Good are... evening, Pastor. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing fine. I don't know whether you can see me just for a moment. At least you're better. Okay. I'm in the dark totally. <laughs> 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 oh, I just train one camera just to uh, one flash lamp to uh, okay. be my face. Um, <clears throat> all right, all right. Uh, I want to welcome you all to our second day. Um, I, I must admit that we we really have been uh, blessed by Pastor Skumbuzo Dube. That um, as he continues to speak to us. We will be blessed. Uh, Brother Tulani, also Brother Pumulani, do welcome. Uh, Brother Novizita Zaza, also welcome. Um, the pastors, also welcome. <clears throat> and also those that are following uh, on our Facebook page at BOH, um, Parkland, and Bulao East Church. We pray that uh, God will continue to bless you <clears throat> as more is being shared. Let us open up to new realities. Uh, I'm going to request Elder Pumulani to give us an opening prayer. And then after that, I'll hand over straightway to Pastor Sikumbuzo to address us. Elder Dube. Would you kindly give an opening prayer? Okay, thank you. Good evening. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Our Father, who is so kind and loving, thank you yet again for affording us this time to meet as men. How we ask for the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, to guide us, to the presenter as he presents, may he speak the message that he has gotten from the throne above. May we as men open our hearts and may the word find fertile ground in which it will be a fruit. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Dubi. Uh, Pastor, thank you for flow now. Thank you very much for the opportunity you have uh, oh. afforded me. I wish you could uh, see me. I love to talk people who, to talk to people who can see me. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have any power. But we, nonetheless, we shall continue with the meetings in this uh, fashion. And so we are so grateful that the Lord has allowed us one more time to come before his throne for a very important purpose and the only purpose uh, that he has desired we are going to accomplish that which is his mission and so uh, that today we have a very important subject which is really the the core of the discussions that we are going to, to, to be having. It is really the, the, the mother of all myths that we are going to be uh, discussing uh, this very important week. And so I just want to welcome you. And for those of you who are on Facebook, we also want to welcome you in a very special way. It is unfortunate that uh, where I am, there is no light I wished there was some light so that you could be able to, to see me. My camera is on, but I'm totally in the dark. I'm just praying for a miracle of light to, to come. Um, and so now we, we, 
we have already prayed and we continue with our subject. Our theme verse for this uh, meeting is um, uh, Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 29 to verse number 30. Actually, it's a key, key text. Uh, the, the people of the land, I'm using the, 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 the Berean study Bible. The people of the land have practiced extortion and they have committed robbery and they have oppressed the poor and the needy and have exploited the foreign resident without justice. I have searched for a man, so says the Lord. I have searched for a man because of these existing circumstances, the Lord is saying, I am in a search for a man among them, among them to repair the wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land so that I should not destroy it but I found none. The Lord says it's unfortunate that I found none. So I have poured out my indignation upon them and consumed them with the fire of my fury. I have brought their ways down upon their heads, declares the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. A key spirit of prophecy text is found in education page number 57 a very popular one the greatest want of the world is the want of men men who will not be bought or sold men who in their inmost souls are true and honest men who do, who do not fear to call sin by its right name men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle is to the North Pole. Shall we pause for a moment of prayer? A gracious and loving Father in heaven, I want to thank you one more time. Call upon your name as we are going to discuss uh, this uh, very essential myth uh, that has actually caused all the problems, most of the problems uh, that we are seeing. Uh, bless us, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we are, are going to be discussing uh, basically the myth, the myth of masculinity. Uh, masculinity itself is a myth. Uh, maybe before I go into defining uh, what uh, the myth of masculinity is, I will begin uh, by uh, taking us back uh, to say uh, many of the things that are happening, uh, they are happening because we are uh, socialized in the way that we are socialized. We, we grew up in this kind of environment that really encourages us to be living in certain ways. And so uh, these things do happen because we are living, we are socialized in this fashion and we are seeing ourselves doing certain things because we have been taught. I just want you to imagine if, if, if you grew up and then um, there was no salt put into your food and uh, every day you ate food without salt and you grew up to be a man eating food without salt. When you got to a place where food was prepared with salt, then you would condemn those that are using salt because you have been socialized in this way. You have been socialized, you've been cultured that food must have salt. Food must have salt. But these who are preparing food as so with salt are doing something that is not all right. Maybe just to add uh, maybe uh, something more to that um, uh, illustration, if I can say maybe if uh, salt was used as, uh, uh, as um, maybe a detergent or something else, you would condemn people that were using salt as food and you would be saying, these people are wasting a detergent. Why are they not using salt as a detergent? Because you have been socialized 
in this kind of a fashion. So culture is the culprit in all of these myths. So I will combine the society and culture. And so I will, I will uh, allow me to use the social cultural uh, uh, dimension is the one that is really uh, uh, responsible for all these myths that we are discussing uh, this week. Uh, there is a psychonaut and an ethnobotanist, a lecturer and an author. Uh, his name is called Terence McKenna. He defines culture in this way. He says culture is a perversion because um, maybe before I get there, you see culture has got um, a branches. You, you have subcultures, uh, um, cultures within cultures. You see, the, the, there is a youth culture and the youth culture is existing in, in the postmodern culture. And this youth culture can have another shred of a rebellion culture and uh, this other culture, it, it actually, there are subcultures within cultures. And so he is speaking in this light and he says, the culture is a perversion. Uh, this is uh, Makina. And then he continues to say it fetishes objects. Uh, rather, it sometimes deifies. It uh, makes them holy. Objects become holy. They become uh, demigods. They become more glorious. Maybe to explain this, uh, culture can glorify a land rover. It can actually glorify a land rover and dehumanize a human being. So it, fet it fetishes uh, uh, objects. Culture creates a consumer mania. It actually creates this kind of appetite uh, to, to uh, like the culture of materialism, which whose preacher is the media and whose parish is uh, the marketplace. And members don't have to uh, leave their congregations in order to be part of uh, uh, this kind of a culture. So this, this kind of a culture really uh, causes um, a bit of, 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 of a problem. So now um, a culture creates consumer mania. It also preaches endless false, endless forms of false happiness. So culture continues to preach endless forms of false happiness. There are so many, the myths that are keeping us from progressing are coming because culture preaches endless forms of happiness. Unfortunately, he also adds that culture preaches endless forms of false understanding. And culture also invites people to diminish themselves and to dehumanize themselves by behaving like machines. Oh, so culture, uh, depending on what kind of a culture, it can actually push people to work like machines, to behave like machines, to treat themselves like machines, and to move from that aspect of becoming human being. Remember, uh, he says culture fetishizes, or fetishizes uh, objects. It deifies, it glorifies objects. Remember, I spoke about the Land Rover, uh, the latest, the 2020 version. Um, I'm just borrowing an illustration from a friend of mine. Uh, the, a small boy went to that car and then he began uh, writing an inscription, uh, peeling off the paint of that 2020 Land Rover, uh, just a brand new. And the father came and he saw the boy scratching the car. He beat the boy, took the boy to the hospital after uh, 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 breaking his arm. And uh, when he looked at the car closely, he saw something that tore his heart. His heart was hushed because the small boy was saying he had actually written on the, on the door of the father, where the, the driver's door, where the father comes in. He had written, Daddy, I love you. So culture actually glorifies it. In this instance, the culture of materialism had deified, glorified um, uh, this Land Rover but then dehumanized, diminished the small boy. So the small boy was least important 
uh, and the car was more important. So uh, having, having said that, um, I, I will take you to an instance uh, where you, um, where, where, where we will understand one, one thing. Um, you, have, you may have heard statements like, you have to man up. Can somebody uh, uh, talk about this statement? When somebody says, you have to man up, what is this person actually saying when they say you have to man up? I, maybe I caught people off guard and maybe my question is not clear. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what comes into your mind when somebody says you must man up? Anyone, 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 before I mention, <laughs> anyone, what comes into your mind? What comes into your mind? Yes, yes, Oli. Uh, uh, oh, unfortunately, maybe we are, we are missing him, Gala. Okay, maybe I can attempt to answer it. Yes, you can. You can. Uh, I think when someone says you must man up, uh -huh. he is saying, don't be who you are. Kill the emotional being that is in you oh. and oh. try to face the situation from another approach. Try to face the situation from another approach. Man up. You said something that is very critical. Uh, forget the emotional person that you are. So there is something that is killed by that statement, men up. Uh-huh. Very, 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 very wonderful. Very wonderful insight there. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that one. Anyone wants to say something on manning up? The equivalents of men up are like maybe grow up, apply yourself uh, apply yourself fully to, to the task that you are doing, or maybe pull up your socks, stockings. Uh, uh, also, maybe uh, uh, getting one ex, getting one's act together. Uh, please, man up. Look at this thing. Uh, become a man. So, so I want you to follow follow closely. This is coming from a myth, and this myth is a myth of masculinity. Uh, those who were developing lang the language at that time, this idiom or this phrase, um, whether it's a wise saying, I don't know what it is, it is coming from a culture that has a myth of masculinity. Uh, follow me closely as, uh, as we continue with this. So a masculine gender is used for this because um, uh, uh, um, you, will, you, you will understand that um, even, if it's even applied to women, Women are told uh, you should man up. <laughs> you should man up. It's also actually said to that. So Novis um, Dalala, uh, for, for those of you who are on Facebook, actually says in a statement that con it's a statement that conveys the idea that, that you are not doing like a man. You are not acting like a man. It's even applied to women. Way women are told uh, you should man up. <laughs> you should man up. It's also actually said to that. So, um, uh, okay, it, it, it's a statement that really conveys the idea that you are not doing like a man. This is what Novizita Lala actually says. You are not doing like a man. She, she should be behaving like a man, behave like a man, like a man would do. So, but it's, um, it's unfortunate that sometimes this, uh, this statement is actually applied to women. So using a masculine gender, for this suggests that maturity is based on gender, which is a false statement. So using a masculine gender for this uh, to say men up. Okay, maybe let me pick another, another word, not a phrase at this, at this moment. Another phrase is a phrase that say, is the, another word is, uh, is uh, the word sissy. This is used to describe a cry baby. The root of this word is coming from sister. So now what is happening here? 
there is a something, um, there is, there is uh, on, on the other side, if, if somebody is a crybaby, yes, Pastor, Pastor Duve, before I, before I continue, yes. I see your hand, sorry, I missed it. Uh, uh, Pastor Duve, your hand is up. You, you can unmute yourself. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, you can you can come in anytime, Pastor. Uh, you can come in anytime, Pastor. Yes. Right. So 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 what we are, are basically what we are basically saying okay. is. Uh, can you yeah. hear me? Yes, yes, I can. We can. Thank you. Okay. So I was uh, trying to use that one to. All right. All right. You can you can come in anytime, Pastor. Uh, you can come in anytime, Pastor. Uh, I'm saying. Um... So, 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 so what we are uh, basically what we are. Okay. So. Yes. I... Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Pastor. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, beautiful. Sorry, I, I, I was uh, using two devices, so one was kind of delayed. Now, what I wanted okay. to say is when, when we, you are being challenged to men up, in a way, you are being challenged to be men, to be strong, to... Um, to try to put on the manly attributes, you are probably weakening up and you are expected to be strong. So to me, that's the understanding of men up. So I agree very much with Um Jaziwa when um, he explained the way he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So so, 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 that's a very important aspect. Thank you very much. Uh, that you are supposed to be strong. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, this is what I am getting. Generally, it is saying you are supposed to be strong. Forget about the affective side of your humanity, but. Focus on the physical side. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. So um, it, it denies that a man can have this kind of a weak side. So it actually denies that. So it's built on a myth. And so I was comparing uh, the word the CC and the phrase you men up men up men up is used to describe being strong but the word sissy is used to describe being a cry baby if you follow closely already this is developed using patriarchal cultural lenses which saw women as second class citizens and, and unfortunately it's putting pressure on the men who must be strong in spite of all the challenges that he is facing. As we are going to be continuing, we are going to see the deleterious effects of this kind of a mentality. And so when a boy is born, I mean, there is a celebration. Uh, uh, there, there is a pastor friend of mine who had uh, uh, ch ch children who are girls, and he says, they said, pastor, another girl. <laughs> what, what, what does that mean to us? What does that mean to us? Uh, I'm not preaching. What does that mean? When they say to, to the pastor, pastor, oh, it's another girl again. What, 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 is this actually, what is this actually saying? Remember, we are talking about the myth of masculinity. And this is, yes, yes, Tulan. Uh, he can hear me. Yes, you are very clear. Yeah, I, actually, I'm on the same line as well with the, with the said pastor. 
because I'm also having girls. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when they look okay. at when people look at you having girls, it's like you are you are less of a father or you are less of a man because hmm. yeah, you can you are getting girls. It's like they are secondary. But once you get hmm. a boy, the celebration is totally different from I hope it will be totally different when I get a boy because when it's a girl, they say, "Oh, he she still giving girls." Finally, yeah, so in yeah. the very culture, mm-hmm. when you get girls, it's they are kind of secondary citizens. Hmm. 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 Okay. Th- thank you. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, f- from from experience, actually, he said something that is really uh, very important. So, um, I mean, if if. Uh, can I do you do you mind being vulnerable um, uh, elder Tilani do you mind being vulnerable if if, if you don't mind I, 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 I if, if if I say to you another girl how how does that make you feel if, if you don't mind being vulnerable since we have lost him Uh, uh, Pastor Dove, are you speaking to me? Yes, yes, yes. If you don't mind being vulnerable, power has come. Hallelujah. If you don't mind being vulnerable, what does it do to you to say, and uh, if I don't know, maybe, I don't know wh- wh- whether you got uh, somebody say, ah, it's another girl, <laughs> another girl. What does that do to you? <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, <laughs> To be honest with you, you feel that you did not could do you did not do a justice to the job. You okay. you are outperformed by a woman, or they, you feel less of a of a father. You feel less of a father. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I can say it actually kills me. Hmm. It actually kills. That's that's what uh, my brother is saying. It. It kills the man inside you. It does something. It says you are less of a father. So, so mm. this is coming. So when a boy, yes. Thank you for being vulnerable. When a boy is born, the celebration is bigger than when a girl child is born. So already there is a lot of pressure that is induced on men to become real men. Allow this a real man for for you to be a real man. Girls should be born. I mean, boys should be born. Um, if boys are not born, then you are a man, but you, you are not a real a real man. So there is a lot of a societal pressure, cultural pressure uh, that comes as a result of all this. So 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 this pressure also is passed on to the sons that are born. The pressure is emanating from the society. The pressure is emanating from uh, the parents, so to speak. The pressure is emanating from the significant others. Unfortunately, the most unfortunate part where the pressure comes from is from within. So from within ourselves. That's, uh, that's, That's the most unfortunate part when the pressure is coming from within myself. So now, what is this uh, myth of masculinity? As we have uh, actually said all these things, everything that we have said is uh, rooted in the myth of masculinity, uh, that a man is the thing. It, manhood is the in thing. Manhood is the thing. A womanhood is part of the thing, or maybe not a thing. So, so this myth suggests that men must be strong, men must be huge, men must be viral, men must be always winning, men must be brave. This myth unfortunately exalts physical strength above everything else. Okay, let me let me take us back to a time when um, um, uh, um, uh, maybe women would be 
uh, watching men doing some physical activity. In, 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 the, in, in olden days, women would be singing and the men who were doing uh, some physical activity, be it cutting a tree or whatever, would be energized by the women that were singing. And these women would be praising the physical component of being a man. So this is actually rooted in the patriarchy, which sees men as equal to physical strength, men as equal to superiority. So man is a better species Okay, for lack of a better word, man is a better species than he than a woman. So, because of this notion, if a man loses, uh, so there is this notion of winning. If a man loses, then man has has a problem. So, men become competitive, and they compete against them uh, the, themselves and not against a set standards. So, 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 so you will find men will be competing because there is this ego. This is where this ego comes from. This ego actually says, I am a man, I cannot fail. I should be better than the next man. Maybe let me make a disclaimer before I go any further. My goal here is not to say uh, a man must be um, let me look for proper phrases to actually describe this. Uh, men must not be some, 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 some nemdi pembi, banana backbone, wishy-washy, or easily beaten, or never to do well male, male figure. Uh, this is not my intention. I'm, uh, I intend to bring the damaging effects of this ideology. Uh, check out a boy who grows uh, uh, under this kind of environment and the pressure uh, that comes is that uh, uh, I should be, I should be, I should be a man, I should be a man. So, um, uh, Pastor Bafana, uh, he, Pastor Bafana has the privilege of having having boys. Um, maybe in your own experience, as, as these boys, uh, I, 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 can I put you on the spot a bit? Can I put you on the spot, Pastor Bafana? He he is a a father of boys. In your own experience, I mean, what has that done to you? <laughs> Sorry for putting you on the spot, uh, Pastor. You, you are muted, Pastor. Okay, um, gentlemen, thank you. Uh, well, uh, well, my, one of my surnames, uh, Bafana, Bafana is my surname, as you know, Jokobe <laughs> Bafana. Yeah. So I grew up knowing that uh, if I'm a really true Bafana, I ought to have boys. So when my wife had the first boy, I knew that, yeah, I'd scored high, really. So it kind of like uh, psychs me up to know that I have boys. <laughs> so, but I, I don't know whether if I didn't have boys, I would feel the way I do. So I'm also a product, a victim of the socialization aspect so it's what is expected and it's what has come out and i'm proud of it if i really i i just have to be open and like you said to be vulnerable for for clarity sake mm -hmm. so that's that's who i am and that's what has, has become of me thank you very much i mean i thank you pastor for being vulnerable and uh, um, uh, we, we have Elder Tulani and Pastor Bafana, they have uh, uh, shared both sides of, of this coin. Um, Elder Tulani has shared with us the, the aspect of having girls only, and Pastor Bafana has actually shared this other side of uh, having a, a, a boys. And um, as we are looking at this, they, the socialization is actually saying, then, if if we if we were to put uh, Pastor Bafana and Elder Tulani on, on the scale, uh, socially, uh, culturally, if we were to put them on the scale, El, Elder Tulani, uh, uh, um, don't don't beat me up. If we were to put 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 them on the scale, cultural lenses will put Elder Tulani lower and put uh, Pastor Bafana higher culturally and uh, this may if 
Elder Tulani doesn't interpret it very well. And if Pastor Bafana also doesn't interpret it very well, it may cause some drawbacks in their uh, progress as human beings. We, we are going to look at this, uh, at this shortly. Uh, Pastor Bafana may, may, may develop that sense of overconfidence. He may develop that sense of entitlement. He may develop a sense of thinking that the world owes him uh, a, a lot because he is a father of boys. He, he may develop that kind of, of a thing. And because of our socialization, he is a father of boys. So, 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 and then on the other hand, Elder Tulani may feel that mm -mm, I am less of a human being and then I am supposed to do other things that will really cover up for my humanity. Uh, so in that, in that instance, what is uh, the, the culprit is the myth of masculinity, which sees women as less of human beings. So, so um, as, as we continue, we are going to really understand this. And let me, let me just uh, uh, bring another example. Let's, let's take, for instance, a boy, a boy who is bullied at school. A boy who is bullied at school. What is going on in the mind of a boy that is bullied at school? What is going on um, taking into cognizance the myth of masculinity. This is a boy that is bullied at school. What is, what, what is uh, taking place? What is happening? What is going on in his mind? Yes, let's feel free. What is going on in the mind of this boy? Maybe my questions are, are, are hard. <laughs> what what could be going on in the in this boy's mind? Uh, probably that I'm weak, I'm not so strong, or something. Yeah, I'm weak. I'm not so strong. I'm not powerful. Yes, mm -hmm. and and I see a controversy in the in the mind of this boy. There is a controversy. The teachers at school, the authorities, maybe his big brothers will try to protect the boy. But then in his mind, he's saying, no, I am a man. I am a man. I don't need to be protected by another person. I am a man. But then he needs this, this protection. So what, what is basically happening? Reality is saying, you need help. You need help. That's what reality is saying. Because other boys are going to continue beating you. But, but then the, the myth of masculinity says, I am a man. I don't need it. I, I, are we getting this controversy? So this is the controversy that men grow up with. They, they, we need help. But then the myth of masculinity says, no, you don't need help. You are strong. You, 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 you need to man up. You need to face the situation. You don't need help. So you will find that uh, suicide cases are on the rise on the side of men. Men are the ones that are really committing suicide. I'll bring statistics as we continue with our lessons. Men are the ones uh, that more men are committing suicide than women. Uh, the statistics actually show us that in this very country, um, uh, that men are the ones that are killing themselves more than women. Because um, this man is saying, no, I, I, I am a man. But then he is going through difficulties. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, he says, I says, um, reality is saying, you need help. You must be helped. You must seek somebody to actually assist you in this kind of a situation that you are in. Uh, but then the myth of masculinity says, no, 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 no. You are not a weak somebody. You are a man. Man up. Face this thing. Face this thing. And so uh, then because of that, men plunge into a lot of challenges uh, that would be avoided, that can be avoided rather. So there are damaging effects of the masculinity myth. Um, and I want to talk about this. Uh, the effect number one, 
men become hunting and killing machines because of this element that I need, I must be strong and it is pumped up. They become hunting and killing machines. So you find that um, there are more men uh, that are violent than women. And you find these days, there's the issue of gender-based violence. The problem is that the society, the social, the social contrast, uh, co Co the, co the, 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 the socialization is that men need to be strong and men don't need to apologize for who they are. Men should actually be the heads, which is a biblical concept. You remember yesterday we said the misapplication of biblical concepts becomes a problem because um, men, are told you are the head and being the head means that uh, up, uh, 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 improperly applied actually means that um, you don't follow, you don't listen to whatever is happening. You don't even uh, uh, follow whatever people are saying. Uh, you, 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 you just continue uh, as, as, as if, if it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when, 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 when people are, uh, are doing all sorts of things. You are the head, you are the head. You don't need to get advice from anybody else. So the myth of masculinity actually says, says that. And then uh, um, the, 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 the third thing is that, the, the second thing is that it leads to the myth of overfunctioning. So uh, Ellen, Ellen White wrote a letter some time ago um, to an individual that was over-functioning. I will read uh, this letter. Uh, this individual had this myth of masculinity. And uh, she says, this is letter 64 of 18, 1886. She says, I feel somewhat anxious about you. I dreamt that you were telling me some of your trials and I said, my brother, if you had possessed the same spirit that Moses had, you would have thorough workers with you. I mean, so he, he was advising a, an individual who uh, wanted to do things on his own. And then he says, when Moses uh, was much burdened, the Lord raised him up, uh, raised, uh, raised him up Jethro, an advisor and, and, and a helper. The advice was taken and the burdens that had come upon him were divided with others and a twofold object was gained. Number one, Moses was re relieved and he had a better chance for his life. And men were learning to bear the responsibilities to qualify them to do um, and men were learning to bear responsibilities to qualify them to do work in positions of trust so that Israel should learn to look not to one man, but not to trust in one man and not to think that only one man is able to do this thing. Uh, and uh, not to think that unless it came from that man, it should be all right. So uh, the myth of masculinity uh, it leads us to the myth of overfunctioning. This individual who is so drowning, who is drowning in the myth of masculinity, will try to do all things by himself. If you nominate this individual to become a church elder, he is going to be uh, lifting the benches. He is also going to be sweeping the church, and he is also going to be making announcements, and he is going to be choristering. He wants to do all things. He doesn't want to divide this because he is saying, I am a man. I am able to carry this. Reality is saying you need help, but then the myth is saying I am a man, I don't need help. So this, this is one of the challenges that is caused by uh, the myth of, mas of masculinity. So, and then she continues to say, now it is hard, I know, to get some responsibilities 
to get uh, to let go of some responsibilities and to give others an opportunity to hold with all the advantages and counsel of your knowledge to help them unless this is done they will uh, they will along uh, to have carry an unwide uh, and 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 we lead without the instruction and counsel which is now they are privileged to have and so ellen, ellen white uh, talks about this and she was giving she was giving an instruction to somebody who was over functioning and having this myth of masculinity actually he her husband uh, james had this problem of over functioning of of, uh, of masculinity, he was saying, I should be able to carry all this. And the Lord gave Ellen a vision to tell the husband that you are overburdening yourself. You are over-functioning. I hope I am speaking to some men that are here. And these are elements that we actually possess as men. We have this myth of over-functioning. And number three, the danger of the of the masculinity myth is that it destroys the development of the whole being it focuses um and i don't remember who at the beginning actually say spoke about the issue of uh, manning up when we say men up uh, somebody actually said um it kills the affective part uh, the emotional part, it is saying, no, be strong. Don't uh, forget about the fact that you are an emotional human being. Uh, be strong, come on, man up and do this kind of a thing. So you should be able to do this thing. So it destroys the development of the whole being. You, um, you will see this in young men that are growing, young men that are growing because of the myth of masculinity, they will pump up uh, lift weights and become a muscular. I don't have a problem with uh, bodybuilding, but uh, the element, the uh, myth that is pushing most of the young men is uh, the myth of masculinity. You find a young man that is lifting weights, that young man doesn't do the garden, that young man doesn't uh, wash uh, his clothes, that young man that doesn't do well at school. And um, this myth of masculinity is actually saying for you to be a man, you've got to be strong. And then this young man is going to strive to have a six pack body so that he is attractive to other women uh, because uh, it is believed that the more huge you are, this is the myth, the myth says that the more huge you are, the more manly you are. I hope I am, I, we are together. Any comments so far um, before we come to an end? And um, if you have a comment, you can just raise your hand and we, 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 we can actually share um, uh, what, what we are discussing. Uh, there is um, a licensed uh, professional counselor um, who is so skilled in this um, aspect of uh, eye movement and desensitization reprocessing. And this is a therapy that is done uh, to people who, are, who have a, a kind of a challenge. And, um, and so, so this, this therapist um, is called Ted Lusk. He says, he, he, he highlights dangers that come from this masculinity myth. And danger number one, according to him, it is chronic and toxic anger. You may find that if somebody was not told, come on boy, you are a man, even if uh, you haven't done that, you will find this chronic and toxic anger. You touch that individual, uh, he uh, bursts into an outrage of anger and uh, this anger is not controlled. And, so, and, and another element is loneliness and isolation. Unfortunately, this can also lead to depression and it can lead to substance abuse. And this person will have a trouble in communicating and his relationships are not so good, are not so good. So, so, so gentlemen, we need to look into ourselves. 
we need to look into ourselves. There are two hands as we come to an end. There is a Novisita Dada, and uh, I'll come to Tulani. Yes, we can, we can comment. Let's feel free to comment. Okay, I, I was saying that uh, doesn't it also lead to abusive tendencies as it kills uh, the affectionate side of a man? Definitely, it actually leads to uh, abusive tendencies. <laughs> because if, if the affective side of a man is killed, then it means the man is desensitized. He, he loses this aspect, this um, notion of the fact that a human being is a physical human being, is a social human being, he is an emotional human being, he is a spiritual being. So a, a human being has all these facets. That is why when Jesus, the man, the man, he grew up in wisdom and stature, which is the physical side, the intellectual side, in favor with God, which is the spiritual and the social. And so he grew in all aspects. So it is very, very important. Thank you for, for, for bringing that one. Uh, Elder Tulani. Oh, thank you so much for such a wonderful lesson, Pastor. We really appreciate. There is a point that you mentioned, which is uh, very, very important, where you said men commit more suicides than women. If you follow it further, also men kill more women than women killing themselves. So mm -hmm. the, the, if you combine these two figures, it, it, it will show that men deaths are caused by men, right? If we follow it further, it's, it's, a, it's a masculinity subject which says that a man has got the courage to win no matter what, what it takes. Because when he oh, kills himself, he thinks he is winning. When he kills somebody okay. who's cheating with his wife, he thinks that he's winning. So it is this okay. thing of that I'm, I have to win no matter what. Mm. Mm. So the winning, the winning mentality is becomes a problem. Thank you for that vital point that you've actually brought. I mean, we 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 as men, we need to be a kind that is different, and that is why this week what we are basically doing is to debunk all these mythologies that are brought by, about by our socialization, that are brought about by our culture. Is, it, is this still an old hand, Elder Tulani, or it's a new one? Oh, it's an old hand. I'll take it down. OK, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. that's fine. That's fine. So um, I, I am praying, um, as we come to an end, I, I want us to get to a process and what, what we are, what I'm doing now is just opening up the wounds. But as we come to an end of, um, of uh, this week, I, I basically want us to uh, reauthor these myths and uh, use them positively. They can be negative, but they are positive aspects that come from these myths. What we are basically doing now is to open up the wounds and to look into ourselves and to say, oh yeah, this is the reason why. I need to be looking at myself. A pastor friend of mine actually told me this, uh, shared this example, he shared it in actually in public. And he said, I was an angry husband. Each time I got home and I found the door locked, when I got inside the home, I would be, violent i would be uh, i mean not uh, not physically violent but i would be shouting at my wife and then i thought to myself this is the reauthoring process i thought to myself why am i doing this then he looked back into his socialization and when he looked back into his socialization he discovered that each when he was growing up uh, each time they came home late when they found the door locked, what did that mean? It meant a walloping, they would be beaten up. And so, when, so because it meant a walloping, then the best thing they could do for themselves uh, at this time now, the best thing he could do for himself now is to say, okay, when I get home, now this is my home uh, uh, and this wife has closed. And the video of early life played 
unconsciously, subconsciously. And he was violent to his wife, not knowing that he is violent to the parents. So we need to look into ourselves. I am pleading that the Lord may help us as we continue with this week. This is going to be knitting, um, uh, it's joining each other like that. So um, maybe missing one may be difficult for you to understand the other concepts. So uh, let's continue to build, these are building blocks. So masculinity, the myth of masculinity is the father of all the myths that are a problem uh, that we see, that we shall, shall discuss. May the Lord bless us as we continue uh, studying. I will hand over uh, to Pastor Wafana, uh, the program coordinator, um, uh, to wind up our, 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 our lesson. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Dube. We really want to appreciate the, the discussion. I can perceive where this is leading, gentlemen. I don't know whether uh, you are getting what I'm getting here. I think the pastor really did promise that it may get deeper and deeper and earthing some wounds. And um, we need to determine to go uh, men up even when we when, when up. Uh, because <clears throat> like I said, uh, I think I'm going to say it again, that uh, some of these uh, <clears throat> myths are causing quite uh, a lot of dysfunction, uh, dysfunction in the, in the homes, uh, because we, we actually are doing things that we are not aware that they are a cause <clears throat> for uh, concern because this is where we are coming from. Um, but we, we, we need not make the same mistakes that we did. Uh, well, I wouldn't call them mistakes because that's how we grew up. That's how um, we were treated when we grew up. But now, like he says, we have a family of choice. We need not uh, re-experience that. So I'm, I'm seeing Pastor Dube, uh, a situation where really some of us may need some form of therapy. I don't know whether you have any good referral. You mentioned quite some therapies. I don't know whether those are quite reachable. If at all there is a man that may perceive that they need to really go deeper uh, in unearthing those wounds, uh, in uh, kind of reauthoring their, their lives or rewriting their, their future. I don't know what resources that are there, what referrals are there people, are they psychiatrists if need be, or psychologists, or maybe even counselors that can counsel with these men. I'm just wondering, and hopefully tomorrow, you'll come also loaded with some extensive uh, resources where men can appeal for help because i don't believe this is just a uh, a meeting for men to just have a good time i believe this is a moment of uh, reckoning and also a moment of um uh healing for those uh long wounds that have never been uh healed at all otherwise thank you so much for the day and I believe that uh, <clears throat> you have been blessed like I have been. We continue to pray for more data bundles. I know how expensive it is, but really, I don't know what it will cost me, a counselor or therapist, to try to help me go over this, uh, the problems that really are being given to us for free here. So it's a good investment in the right direction. We really want to appreciate you, man. Um, may God bless you all. I, I want to thank you. I sent a special message to each of you. I hope I managed to reach each of you. Okay, so I'm going to request for, uh, um, let me see who didn't pray for us. Um, can I ask Brother Tulani to give us a closing prayer? Uh, before he, he closes, let me also remind you that we have um, our morning devotion at five. 
Uh, thank you so much for participating today. We had uh, a very quite a lot. Okay, let us pray. Our Father, so our pastor preaches to us again in the morning for about 10 minutes. Lead out. Okay, yes, uh, are you yes. finished, Pastor? Yes, I, I'm done. You can you can you can pray uh to Lani. Okay, let us pray. Okay. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this wonderful moment that you have given us that we may share the information about us men. Some of the things that have been said here are directly affecting us, Father. As we're going further with the lessons, Father, bless the pastors that are within us that they may share the information that you think is much needed in us. Be with us, be with our families, be with everyone who's participating and bring more men so that our societies may be built. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, people. God bless you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Thank you. Uh, brother Kala. Yes.